Okay, so let's dive in. If you're Gen Z like me, you're probably on a dating app. Or at least you've thought about it, right? Yeah, definitely. It's basically the norm these days. Totally. But we're not just here to talk about finding a date. We're going deep on safety. We're looking at this guide all about how Gen Z can stay safe on dating apps. Sounds good. Yeah. I think it's something that's not talked about enough. I agree. And this guide starts off with a story about this 22-year-old named Kayla. Well, Kayla's not a real person, but her story is. She almost went on a date with someone who was totally faking their identity. Oh, wow. Okay, so right off the bat, the guide is reminding us that not everyone is who they say they are online. It's a good point. I mean, have you ever actually reverse image searched someone you met online? You know, I haven't really. I guess I kind of just assume people are being honest, you know? Me too. It feels like something like older people would do. My mom always told me to Google people before I meet them, but I never actually listened. Uh huh. Yeah, it feels almost like a parent thing. But honestly, thinking about how easy it is to make fake profiles these days, maybe it's something we should all be doing. So reverse image search, definitely adding that to my dating app checklist. It should be at the top. And it's not just about fake profiles here. The guide talks a lot about protecting your personal information in general. Okay, so like what kind of stuff should we be careful about sharing? It's that balance, right? You want to show off your personality and be authentic. Yeah. But you also don't want to give away too much. Yeah, it's tough. I guess it's easy to overshare when you're trying to make a good impression. Totally. But the guide asks this question. Think about your own profile. Hmm. Is there anything there that could reveal more about you than you want? Like stuff that someone could use to track you down or whatever. Hmm. You know, I just realized I have my Instagram linked on my profile. That feels pretty harmless, I guess. It might seem harmless, but you never know. And it's not just social media. What about details about your work or school? Oh, yeah, true. I guess I do mention where I go to school sometimes. Yeah, and even those little details could give someone a pretty good idea of your routine. Okay, that's kind of creepy when you think about it like that. It is. So the guide gives some good advice about keeping those early conversations on the app itself, not rushing to share personal details. Okay, so like basically pumps the brakes a little. Exactly. Don't feel pressured to give it all away right away. Wait until you feel like you actually trust the other person. That makes sense. Especially with those profiles that are like too good to be true. Have you ever come across those? Uh, yeah, all the time. They look like they're straight out of a magazine or something. It's almost like too perfect to be real. Yeah, and that's often a red flag. Those could be catfish accounts or even scammers. Ugh, so annoying. I guess that's where the reverse image search comes in handy. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's also about looking for other clues. You know, does this person have an actual online presence? Or is their entire identity just that one dating profile? Hmm. Okay, so like checking to see if they have other social media accounts that seem legit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like a little detective work. And speaking of red flags, has anyone ever tried to push you to move the conversation off the app, like really fast? Oh, yeah. It's always a bit weird when someone immediately wants to switch to text or Snapchat or whatever. I had this one guy who, like, wouldn't stop asking me for my Snapchat. It was so pushy. And that's a huge EE -E red flag. The guide really emphasizes the importance of staying on the app, at least for a while. Yeah. It's just safer that way. I get it. Like, what's the rush anyway? Seriously. And if someone can't even respect that simple boundary, that's not a good sign, right? Nope, definitely not. The guide even mentions that it's harder to report someone or trace their actions if you're not communicating through the app. Makes sense. So it's like the app provides a layer of protection. It's like a safety net. Huh. It's there for a reason. I guess that makes me think about actually meeting up with someone in person, which is like the biggest step. Yeah, that's where all these initial safety measures come together. The guide has a lot to say about that too, right? Totally. Like, think about all the basic first date rules we've all heard a million times, like meet in a public place, tell a friend where you're going. Those are even more important when you're meeting someone from a dating app. But isn't the, like, tell a friend thing kind of embarrassing? I know what you mean. It can feel weird, especially when you're just starting to get to know someone. But honestly, it's such a crucial safety precaution. It's not about being paranoid. It's just about being smart and letting someone know where you are. I guess that makes sense. And wouldn't you rather have your friends tease you than be in a situation where you need help and no one knows where you are? Okay, you're right. Safety over embarrassment. I hadn't thought about it like that. And, you know, the guide even asked this question. What would you do if your match insisted on meeting at their place instead of a public spot? Ooh, that's a good one. Right. 
Like, how would you feel about that? Would that raise any red flags for you? Definitely. It's making me rethink some of my past dating app experiences, that's for sure. It's always good to reflect. Okay, so we've talked about reverse image search, protecting our info, staying on the app, meeting in public places, telling a friend. What about all those scary stories we see about scammers and catfish? Okay, so that's another big thing the guide addresses. I feel like those stories are everywhere online these days, but are they really that common? They are. It's not just something that happens to other people. Yikes. So what are some of the classic red flags to look out for? Well, asking for money is a huge one. Like, no matter how convincing the story is, if someone you met on a dating app asks you for money, that is a major red flag. Okay, got it. What about those profiles that just seem, like, unbelievably perfect? Yeah, remember what we were saying about those too-good-to-be-true profiles? Those are often the ones to watch out for. So, like, influencers of deception. Exactly. And it's not just about spotting those fake profiles. It's also about understanding why these scams work in the first place. Oh, that's interesting. Like, what makes people fall for these things? A lot of it comes down to psychology. These scammers prey on our empathy, our desire for connection, even our loneliness sometimes. Wow, that's kind of disturbing. But it makes sense. It does. And the guide has this really thought-provoking question. Have you ever been asked for money or gifts by someone you met online? And then it asks, like, what were the warning signs you wish you had noticed earlier? Hmm. I like that. It makes you think. It does. It's like a self-reflection exercise to help us learn from any past experiences. It's definitely a reminder that we can all be vulnerable to these tactics, no matter how smart we think we are. Absolutely. No one is immune. You know what? It's not just about protecting ourselves from scammers. It's also about protecting our, like, mental health. Oh, that's a great point. Yeah. Because all this swiping and matching, it can be emotionally exhausting. Seriously. It can be a real roller coaster. The guide talks about that too. It dives into the whole emotional side of dating apps. It actually might be a good place to pick up next time. Yeah, let's do that. We can dive deeper into that next time. So last time, we were talking about how dating apps can be a real roller coaster of emotions. Totally. It's like one minute you're feeling super excited about a potential match, and then the next minute you're like totally bummed when they ghost you. It's true. And the guide really digs into that. It talks about how constantly putting yourself out there and dealing with all the like uncertainty can be pretty draining. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. It's like you're always on, you know, trying to present this perfect version of yourself. Yeah, exactly. And then there's all the comparison that happens. You see all these other people with their like perfect profiles and perfect lives. Ugh, don't even get me started on that. It's so easy to fall into the comparison trap. It can really mess with your self-esteem. Totally. And the guide points out that this can be especially tough for Gen Z because we've grown up with social media. Yeah, true. Like we're already bombarded with images of perfection all the time. Exactly. So it's like dating apps just add another layer to that. Makes sense. So what does the guide say about like how to deal with all of that? Well, a big thing it emphasizes is setting boundaries, mm -hmm. like knowing when to take a break from the apps. Maybe even deleting them for a while if you need to. Okay, boundaries. That's something I'm working on in real life, too. It's so easy to get sucked into the whole swiping thing and just, like, lose track of time. It's so true. It can be addictive. Totally. And it can be hard to know when to stop. But the guide is all about, like, taking control of your experience rather than letting the apps control you. I like that. Taking control. It's like, we have more power than we think we do. We totally do. Mm -hmm. And it's also about being mindful of how these apps are designed. Oh, interesting. What do you mean by that? Well, they're designed to keep us hooked, right? Like all those notifications and matches and messages. It's all meant to keep us coming back for more. Oh, yeah, totally. It's like a game almost. Exactly. The guide even uses the word gamification. Gamification. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, like they use all these techniques to make us feel good and keep us engaged. But sometimes it's good to step back and remember that it's not all real, you know? Right. It's all happening on a screen. It's easy to forget that sometimes. It is. And I think for Gen Z, this can be especially tricky because we've grown up with instant gratification. Like we're used to getting validation and attention online. So true. And dating apps just tap into that. So like what are some things we can do to stay like mentally healthy while still using these apps? Because I don't want to delete them forever. Yeah, for sure. The guide has some good tips. Like one thing it talks about is setting realistic expectations. Realistic expectations. Okay. Like, like well, not every swipe is going to be a match and not every match is going to lead to a relationship. And that's okay. Right. Right. It's easy to get disappointed when things don't work out. Totally. Mm -hmm. But it's important to remember that everyone is dealing with their own stuff. 
You know, yeah. it's not a personal rejection every time someone swipes left. Yeah, I think that's something I need to remind myself of more often. It's something we all need to remember. And it's also about remembering that the versions of ourselves that we present on these apps are just that versions. Like they're not the full picture. Totally. Like everyone's putting their best foot forward, you know? Exactly. So it's important to keep that in mind when you're comparing yourself to others. Okay. That's really helpful. I also think it's great that a lot of these apps are adding more safety features now. Oh yeah, totally. I was just going to bring that up. The guide talks about that too. It's like, a lot of these apps are taking safety more seriously these days. Yeah, like I've seen stuff about photo verification and video chat features. Exactly. And those can be really helpful in making sure people are who they say they are. Like, have you ever used any of those features? I've seen them, but honestly, I don't really use them that much. It's like one of those things where you think, oh, I don't need that. But maybe we should. Yeah, I think so too. It's like yeah. you wouldn't get in a car without wearing a seatbelt. Totally. So why not take advantage of the safety tools that are available on dating apps? Right. Like, what are some of the features that stand out to you? Well, I think Bumble's photo verification is a good one. Like, it helps to cut down on catfishing. Oh, that makes sense. So yeah. it's like they have to prove that they're a real person. Exactly. And then Tinder has this safety check-in feature. What's that? It's like, if you're feeling unsafe during a date, you can use the app to alert a friend. Oh, wow. That's really smart. Right. It's like having a virtual wingman. I love that. So it sounds like the guide is really encouraging us to take advantage of these safety features. It is. And it's not just about using the features. It's also about being aware that they exist. Like just knowing that these tools are there can give you a sense of security. Yeah, I think that's really important. Because at the end of the day, it's about taking control of your online dating experience and making choices that prioritize your safety and well-being. Okay, so we've covered a lot here protecting your info, setting boundaries, taking care of your mental health, and utilizing all the cool safety features that are available. I feel like I've learned so much from this guide. Me too. And I love that it doesn't just tell us what to do, it also asks us to think about our own experiences. Yeah, like it ends with this really great question. What personal strategies or rules have you developed to stay safe while using dating apps? I love that. It's like we're all in this together, sharing our tips and wisdom. Exactly. Because well, we all have something to contribute. So what are some of the strategies or rules that you've developed for yourself? Hmm. That's a good question. I think one of the biggest things for me is trusting my gut. Like if something feels off, I just move on. Yeah, I think that's such good advice. I'm definitely guilty of ignoring my gut sometimes, especially when I'm like really interested in someone. I get it. But it's like those instincts are there for a reason. They are. So trusting your gut for sure. What else? I also try to remember that, like, dating apps are just one way to meet people. It's not the only way. That's a good point. Like, if I'm not feeling it, I don't force myself to use them. Exactly. It's okay to take breaks or explore other ways of meeting people. Right. We don't have to be on these apps 24-7. Exactly. And I think that's something the guide really emphasizes. It's about taking control and making choices that work for you. And I love how the guide talks about the importance of community and shared knowledge. Like, we're not alone in this. So true. It's like... We can all learn from each other's experiences and support each other. And that's what this deep dive is all about, right? Creating yeah. a space where we can talk about these things openly and honestly. That's exactly it. Because at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. To use these apps in a way that feels safe and empowering and hopefully leads to some genuine connections. That's the dream. It is. And I think this guide gives us a really great roadmap for getting there. I agree. It's all about being informed, setting boundaries, and trusting ourselves. And remembering that we're all in this together. So to all our Gen Z listeners out there, keep those tips in mind, stay safe out there, and most importantly, have fun. You know, thinking back on all the stuff we talked about in this Deem Dive, the thing that really sticks with me is how the guide emphasizes taking control of your experience on dating apps. Yeah, I agree. It's like, it's not about living in fear or avoiding these apps altogether. It's about being smart and making choices that prioritize your safety. Right, like we have more power than we realize. We do. Every time we open a dating app, we're making decisions like who we swipe on, how much info we share. And those decisions can make a big difference. They really can. And this guide gives us like the knowledge to make those choices confidently. Totally. It's like a roadmap for navigating the wild world of dating apps. Uh-huh, I like that. A roadmap. Because let's be real, it can feel kind of overwhelming sometimes, you know? It can. But the guide breaks it down in a way that's actually really helpful and empowering. 
It is. And it's great that we're finally having these conversations about safety and boundaries in the dating app world. Oh, absolutely. I feel like even a few years ago, this wasn't really something people talked about openly. I know. And it's great to see how Gen Z is really pushing for change. Yeah. Like well, we're not just accepting things as they are. We're demanding better. And that's so important because it's not just about protecting ourselves. It's also about creating a better experience for everyone. Exactly. It's about fostering a culture of respect and safety on these platforms. So as we wrap up, what's one piece of advice you would give to our Gen Z listeners who are like out there navigating the world of dating apps? Hmm. I would say, above all, trust your gut. Like if something feels off about a person or a situation, don't ignore that feeling. That's such good advice. It's like our instincts are usually right. They are. And remember, you don't have to do anything that makes you feel uncomfortable. You always have the right to say no, to block someone, to report someone. Absolutely. And there are resources out there if you need help or support. Like, don't be afraid to reach out to a friend, a family member, or even one of those organizations that specialize in online safety. Yeah, you don't have to go through this alone. And keep sharing your experiences. The more we talk about these things openly and honestly, the better equipped we'll all be to navigate this stuff. I couldn't agree more. Well, this has been a great deep dive. I had a lot of fun talking about this. Me too. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And remember, stay safe out there and don't forget to trust your gut.